The criminal justice system is not infallible, and unfortunately, innocent people are sometimes convicted of crimes they did not commit. In this video, we witness the powerful and emotional moments when those individuals are finally exonerated and set free. The shock, disbelief, and overwhelming joy on their faces as they take their first steps outside of prison is palpable. It's a moment they've been waiting for, often for years or even decades, and the raw emotion that spills out in these moments is both heart-wrenching and inspiring. Join us as we witness the incredible resilience of the human spirit in the face of adversity. Number 1. Joyce Watkins and Charlie Dunn Wrongful imprisonment can break the strongest bonds between people such as Joyce Watkins and Charlie Dunn, who didn't just have to clear their name of crime, but from genuine stomach-churning dishonor. Joyce and her boyfriend Charlie weren't just accused of murder, but the murder and rape of a four-year-old child. Joyce's great-niece Brandy, in 1987, after staying with the family for two months, Joyce was spending a normal, happy day in Nashville, Tennessee, picking her great-niece up when she noticed she was injured. She took her to the hospital on the results of shocking head trauma and vaginal injuries absolutely revolting. Brandy tragically died from her injuries and outdated science placing the injuries. At the time, Brandy was with Watkins and had doomed the couple to life in prison for a first-degree murder and aggravated rape. With the frustratingly heinous accusations, they kept their words of innocence the entire time in prison. But another heart-wrenching tragedy happened along the way. Dunn's death from cancer. Not only did he live wrongfully convicted, but he died tragically locked away from his friends and family. Eventually, the same way science put them in prison, science got them out, when the methodology that placed Brandy's injuries at their house was questioned. After a ruling to be released on parole in 2015, it took until 2021 for another report to vacate the convictions. And that's when 74-year-old Joyce Watkins was finally released, but unable to reunite if done. Some witnesses can be incredibly unreliable, such as the ones in the next case. Number 2. Lamar Johnson Lamar Johnson was another victim of unreliable witnesses and corrupt officials. This tale of injustice started in 1994 in St. Louis with the murder of Marcus Boyd. Witnesses placed Lamar Johnson, Philip Campbell, and James Howard. However, there was no physical evidence linking Johnson to the murder. So how exactly did witnesses identify Johnson? Apparently, his eyes are similar. Yeah, seriously. An innocent man was condemned to 28 years of prison for someone comparing his eyes. Thankfully, the other two suspects confessed to the crime and only Johnson remained. It was clear as crystal, especially to circuit attorney Kim Gardner, that Johnson was innocent and that they had to fight legal battles for over two decades to get him out. Remember that one confused witness, though, while apparently he backtracked and said his testimony shouldn't have been used for the conviction. Well, hindsight is 2020, and this one was way too late. Eventually, though, with a new law by Missouri in 2021, Johnson was exonerated and released. Two years later, now 49, he'd missed out on his prime years for a crime he never committed. Number 3. Amanda Knox An innocent convict is sometimes logically the last person who would commit the crime, such as Amanda Knox, whose entire case would make someone say, Wait, what? In an extremely confusing plot of murder and scandal that made Donald Trump himself condemn the entire country of Italy. To try and understand what exactly happened, we need to head to an unusual location for these cases. Italy, on November the 1st, 2007, where Meredith Kircher was murdered in her bedroom, the main suspect, her roommate Amanda Knox, Amanda's boyfriend, Rafael Salcito, and Amanda's boss at the bar she worked in, Patrick Lumumba whom Amanda implicated. All three were arrested. Amanda made things way worse for herself when she signed a statement claiming to be at home when Kircher was murdered. It's kind of unlikely for someone to be magically murdered in a house where someone else is staying without them noticing. So Amanda was immediately in the hot seat. Even though Amanda was suspect number one, the plot thickened with the introduction of a new character. Rudy Guade was the police's new suspect. Who was he? Apparently Kurt's lover, or at least someone she was sexually active with. Gwade, on the other hand, claimed that Kircher was killed by another man. Oh, and Lumumba was cleared of charges and planned on suing Amanda. But anyway, 
A year later, the prosecution jumps miles to conclusions and charges Amanda, Guade, and Salcedo with the murder. One by one, the prosecution gave out the sentences like they were nothing. First, Guade was found guilty and got 30 years, and Amanda and Salcedo received 26 and 25 year sentences. Despite Amanda testifying to stressful interrogations that led to physical abuse against her, in 2010, Amanda stood trial in tears saying, I've been condemned for the crime I did not commit. But the hammer of justice personified in two inmates who testified that Wade told them that Amanda was not involved with the murder. And after more back and forth in the case, fast forward to 2013 when the two suspects had a retrial where she asserts her innocence saying, I must repeat to you, I'm innocent. I did not rape. I did not steal. I did not kill Meredith. A year later, Amanda and Soto are finally cleared of all charges, after DNA evidence proved inconclusive in a completely unjust and brutal scenario. Italy became forever ruined for Amanda. Number 4. Joseph Webster Innocent men like Joseph Webster could really make someone lose their trust in the justice system. This wrongfully imprisoned man was caught up in a web of murder, false accusations, and corruption. The story started off in Nashville, Tennessee, when Leroy Owens was murdered brutally with a cinder block by two men, between 5'9 and 6, one at 175 to 230 pounds, after the killer couldn't be easily found and identified. One witness by the name of Tammy Nelson picked out 19-year-old Joseph Webster from a police line, citing him as the killer. Webster's criminal record was mostly clean except for drug misdemeanor charges from before with no other suspects. Webster was arrested and sentenced to life in prison on March 1, 2006, seven years after the original crime. However, Webster was completely in the clear, and he wasn't ready to pretend otherwise. Now fast forward three years to 2009, and Tammy Nelson seems to suddenly get a change of mind, saying that she mistook Webster for his brother, Kenneth Neal. On the confusion regarding Webster's arrest, Nelson boldly and embarrassingly said, I really couldn't identify them back then. I just picked out a mugshot of guys that look like them. I don't know, just big black guys. We don't know about you, but that just screams someone you should never take the testimony off of again. Because of this disaster, Webster had to spend five more years in prison until the next update, when Tammy Nelson dropped an absolute bombshell on everyone. Apparently, she was given a deal by the prosecution to testify against Webster in exchange for a drug court diversion project instead of prison. Talk about judicial corruption and complete lack of conscience. Unfortunately, an appeal wouldn't be approved, and after going back and forth with DNA evidence, Webster was finally cleared of all charges and released in November of 2020. That day was probably the happiest he could ever be, and it wasn't just the world waiting for him on the other side of the cell, for his friends, family, and loved ones welcome him warmly. Number 5. Daniel Viegas the only thing worse than being wrongfully imprisoned is doing it by your own hand, like Daniel, who was the only person on our list with a confession, but there's more to it than meets the eye. Daniel was a prime suspect in the murder of two men outside a party in 1993. However, unlike normal suspects, the interrogator seemed adamant about having Daniel confess. The seed of corruption started with a suspect by the name of Daniel Rangel, who was threatened by four officers to accept the confessions. However, after having already given an alibi to his 16-year-old cousin, Daniel Viegas, Rangel said that it was Viegas who shot the two men. Viegas was arrested, and just like his cousin, he was also abusively threatened by the authorities with threats, like sexual assault and the death penalty until he was forced to sign a confession. A year later, Viegas was convicted of double murder and sentenced to life in prison. God knows how Viegas felt signing off on his own unjust fate, but the world isn't fully devoid of justice, though. And because of the actions of the four officers who threatened Viegas, the investigation was deemed unreliable. The real proof of justice, however, came on the day of Legacy's trial when he refused a plea deal to plead guilty and on that same day was found innocent. Sometimes you just get a gut feeling. It saves your life. But sadly, all of this just goes to show how the justice system may be flawed, but that there is always hope at the end. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to us to stay updated on our latest content. We appreciate your support and can't wait to see you in the next video.